Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overall series in Kerbal Space Program 0.90 Beta. In this episode we're going to try and send the goo containers up to geosynchronous orbit again, uh, fulfilling that contract because after all they're paying us for it so we should prioritize that. And because we have to put two goo containers now for symmetry's sake and because it doesn't balance with just one, I have decided to remove the Science Junior. After all we did the Science Junior experiment already and rearrange things a bit so that the thruster finally gets the fuel and so we can now see the fuel availability for that thruster being uh, 7 minutes of burn time and that should be quite enough to make all of the fine-tuned maneuvers that we need. So yeah, the, that's the probe and of course it's got the big antenna to communicate with any other satellites that uh, and probes that we will need and that's about the size of it. Yep, the uh, charge looks fine uh, both of our panels will face the sun, so that is okay. Alright, so uh, I'll just package just this up and there's no point wasting any time. I did resize the stages a bit, so uh, just for you to know, I've extended the second stage instead of just 5 minutes, it's now 6 minutes, so it's a really long stage. And that allowed me to reduce the size of the first stage, which of course uh, had a little bit of a problem. Uh, with the gimbling close to the end so shortening it up hopefully it won't have that uh, gimbal oscillation as much it I took 15 seconds off of that so that's how the balance worked out so and again I do have the gimbal action grouped so we do have the center engine is toggled on 9 and the other engines toggled on 0 so I've got to remember that just in case there's a problem Otherwise, uh, everything else is as it was, and it worked out pretty well last time, so I think it'll work out fine this time as well. So, save, and launch. Oh darn, I forgot to launch from from Kuru instead of Cape Canaveral, so uh, let us bring this back in, and we have to change the launch site. Okay, here we are, launching at around dawn from Kuru. And we're not at the right longitude of ascending node. We should be at 90 or something like that. And inclination has to be 3.9. So we'll have to fix that uh, once we get to altitude. And uh, it'll be easier once we get to like uh, the target apoapsis to fix all of that anyway. So here we go. SAS on. Throttle is up. And ignition of the RS-27s. And launch. Brownish tint there to the horizon. Don't normally think of, I mean, I'm sure it's just a dark red that looks brown to me. Okay, we've got a nice plume going. Okay, 30 seconds left in the stage. We'll see if it has gimbling issues close to its end. It only gets to 3.8 G's in acceleration, so hopefully that'll keep it restrained enough. But here we go, this is where things may go awry. Gotta make one final correction to test it. Okay, it still normalizes. Well, looks good. Sep. Oh, we've got fairing sep at the same time. Uh, well, let's go for it. Oh, that was not a good idea. Fairing's just sort of flopping around there. Hmm. Yep, staging error. Had the fairing sep at the same time as ignition, but. Okay, well. Oh, they're just hanging out. I suppose I could try a roll. Let's try a roll. And I, I can't do that with just one engine, so I'm going to have to 
make sure I lock the MMH and N204 tanks up here so that only that tank gets used before I activate the RCS and RCS on okay RCS on and execute that roll, how about that? this guy should be configured right no it is rolling very slowly though that's not going to be fast enough to knock those things off of course these RCS thrusters weren't really meant to do this they're just meant for attitude adjustments supplementary antennae out I don't know if that'll well, they're, they're oh, those are the soul panels. Ouch! Knocked into the fairing on that side. That's a problem. Let me retract those, just in case. Uh, supplementary antennae out. Okay. Hmm. Unexpectedly, we're a little bit short of fuel here. Looks like. Wonder why that is. Thought we had plenty plenty to go with. Maybe pitched a little bit too high, didn't flatten out quickly enough. We're not that high on the apoapsis though. Well, if absolutely necessary, we can uh, directly punch out to our target apoapsis. It's not quite the right place. We're not at the ascending node or the target apoapsis point. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, roughly circular orbit that we're targeting, so it wouldn't be too bad. And we've got plenty of fuel. Ah, probably carrying the fairings with us has caused a problem. Yeah, I imagine that would have changed things a little bit. Okay, well, that's not bad. That's not bad. We've got to a safe periapsis. So yeah, okay, it worked out. I'm actually gonna let this fuel expend. Why not? And uh, while it's doing that, let me plot for our best situation. I guess the best thing to do is to hit where this descending node is and burn out from that. Then we can adjust our inclination as well. So taking a look at where that is. I don't know if that, that's probably where it crosses the equator. That's not necessarily where we cross the equator, right? I don't know. I don't have a equatorial reference to work with here. So I mean, that's the best thing I can do. Or well, maybe we had to make a correction last time. Maybe I should just aim for that periapsis there. Seems like there's a horrible time to match that orbit though. It does seem like this will produce better results. Yeah, it's not quite in the right uh, longitude of ascending node, but I think that's probably better. So we should be... oh no, they're still thrusting. Okay, well, uh, let's turn that off because it's going to mess up the resulting plot. But uh, we'll let them turn us to the node. How about that? Well, that fairing is leaving, uh, and that fairing is leaving too. Okay, very good. Turning is a good thing. But I, I'll take Smart ASS off because it's going to overdo it again. So let me counter the current momentum. And SAS can stabilize around that point. And let's bring out the solar panels. Okay. All right, should be good. Throttle up. So we'll actually use this stage's MH and N204 to sell the fuel down. And I think it's out of fuel. Okay, I'm locking this bunch and set. And ignition. Okay, ignition is good. 
Okay, inclination and longitude of ascending node are trending in the right direction. Again, we want uh, 3.9 degrees and 90.5 degrees on the longitude of ascending node. Well, while we are on our way, let's take a look at uh, when possible transfer times will be. And, uh, okay, I should have it on Kerbin. Uh, I'm not going to take this as rote, but uh, at least as a guideline of what order our mission should be. So, uh, to Mars, 611 days. To Jupiter, 40 days. So, we'll be aiming for Jupiter first. Then, between the Jupiter launch and the Mars launch, maybe we should try uh, a landing on the moon again with a single Kerbal this time, not with two Kerbals. I think two Kerbals was overdoing it. Uh, yeah, it's nice to match Apollo exactly, but given our rockets, I think we should try landing a single Kerbal on the moon first. I'll think about that, though. Uh, I'll take a look at our capsules if we've unlocked something new, maybe, since I last tried the mission. But I think I want to make it as straightforward as possible. We do have the lunar module ascent and descent engines, so that's positive. That will help us out. So yeah, but first the uh, Jupiter mission again, with upgraded communication and solar panels. Okay, getting close to the end of this burn. I've held it too close to a 3.9 degree inclination. Longitude of ascending node is off though, as it was last time. Okay, that should do. We actually needed a periapsis of 34,873 kilometers, so that's a bit high. So why don't we retro a little bit. Uh, is that really the periapsis point? It's not really. It's right in the middle. So yeah, I guess it's fine because uh, it splits the difference between the two numbers. Okay, so we won't adjust like that. Okay, let's head on up and uh, circularize and then fix that longitude, longitude of ascending node. I don't think we'll be able to do it from there. Maybe we will. Okay, we are now turning to prograde. I should actually do that myself. Okay, settling the fuel down. Okay, ignition. Okay, getting close here, but we'll be out of the right phase, so it's not got to fulfill the contract for us. I think that's, uh, that's good enough for now. Let's fix the longitude of ascending node issue. Ah, that's pretty close. Alright, let's go with that and see if that fulfills it. Okay, maybe went a little bit too far there. Let's back off. Okay, I think it uh, likes the orbit I'm in right now, I, I, so I won't mess with it. Let me fill the contract first. Okay, it has fulfilled the contract. We've done it. Now, it's really a short orbital period. It's going to precess. But this is probably not the it's not the right way to point to fix that. Let's point prograde. Okay, that's about right. And let's see if uh, our power situation is right. It should be, but let's just just uh, separate the probe. Okay, didn't get the separation sound. Okay, we need to unlock the tanks. Okay. Hmm, that put us in the wrong orbital period. But I guess we'll wait until we hit apoapsis or periapsis to change that now. Periapsis. 
Then we have to... No, we already done a GUI experiment, so we don't have to do that. Alright, where is the sun? This is pretty close. Let's just make sure we're facing properly. But we've definitely got the electric charge. Okay, activating the main antenna. It doesn't really read the charge drain there. It does there. Seems like we have more drain than I'd like. But, but, it's alright, because while time warping, the probe cores go to low power mode and then it's alright. Okay, so uh, that's my logic and I'm sticking to it. The probe cores will turn off or go into low power mode and this will continue as a communication satellite. Okay, so that is satisfactory. Let's go back to the VAB and talk about working on that Jupiter probe. Okay, so here we are with Jupiter probe 2 and let's discuss all the interesting business. Let me take off the launcher. The launcher hasn't changed. There's a shiny launcher that we used last time and it seemed to work pretty well. So I'm gonna take it off and uh, here we have the probe. It has the much bigger antenna here, the Reflectron KR-14. Now the KR-14 doesn't have uh, as... I mean it has a little bit more energy requirement but not that much more. This The KR-7 had 0.18 charge per second and this has 0.2 and important to note that because fuse box doesn't add it in so we've got 0.2 charge per second there and let's keep that in mind and uh, but it's got the range we need so that's good and we still got the supplementary antennae so we can communicate with the probe itself which will not have this antenna to communicate back now solar panels so I've got four of these big solar panels and I've, I've made the case that I don't think they're overpowered uh, considering the area that they cover and the fact that actually I think they're overall less efficient than the ones on the Juno probe. Uh, so I think they're legal. But we'll see. Anyway, we've got a lot of them. Uh, 2.7 per second. Now, the solar panels that aren't uh, legal as far as I'm concerned are these, this, uh, these hex photovoltaics. Uh, you can see are like that. Very small but you can see they're 1.5 per second now they they have a well they have only a tenth of the mass of these solar panel arrays and they they make half the power and on top of that they don't have much area I mean they have about they only have a little bit more area than these guys so they seem to be a little bit cheaty I will accept that those are not I, I unlocked them to see how big they were um, but I now regret spending the funds for that. Yeah, so these guys are probably cheaty. These guys, I, I, I'm thinking that they should be safe. And so we've got the antenna on one side and we've got a goo container on the other because I needed to counterbalance it. It's not a perfect balance though. Uh, taking a look, uh, the reflectron is 0.05 tons. The goo, con oops, uh, the goo container is 0.075. So I've put the DP10 antennae, these guys, over with the reflectron on the reflectron side that balances about it out a little bit better but not exactly okay now if we take a look at the charge generation and go into that in detail so we need 25 times the the charge that it's uh, yeah 25 times or we we cut the generation by 25 how about that either way so now we've got the Agena package and that's going to be 0.25 per second no matter what. Uh, the, the surveyor core is only, uh, it powers down by a factor of 200. Is that right? Yeah. So powers down by a factor of 200. It's only 0.8 watts per second, which is 0 0.0008. So I'm not, I'm just not going to count that. Now when we're when we're fully active, it's going to be more. It's going to be 0.16 per second. But uh, we, we'll assume that electric charge can handle that when it's not time warping. So I'm not going to count that in just uh, now. And so 0.25 and then the main antenna is 0.2. So that's 0.45. Let me see. Calculator out. 11.65 divided by 0.45. 25.8888 so just barely 
Now these other antennae might cost a little bit, but we'll assume that we can turn them off and then turn them back on when we need to. Uh, and they'll just suck up some battery maybe. Um, in any case, it should be about right. So, uh, I think this is enough. It's tough to see how I can do any more. Now, uh, obviously it'll be this side facing the sun, so these two panels, this panel, this panel, this panel, this panel, will all be facing the sun. The ones on top won't, so I'm hoping that they're just going to be the point, point eight eight that I don't get, and the rest of these will supply to 25. Yeah. Well, that, uh, I think that's the best I can do for now. Again, we'll try and turn off the battery if necessary, but I don't think it'll be necessary this time. Okay, so very, very robust compared to the last time at least. And, um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. We're just going to try a flyby of one of the moons and also get into the system. We have the one goo container, and again we have the thermometer and barometer. That's all the science we've got and the probe core situation report. Okay. So I'm going to package this up and this is how it's gotta be. I'll check staging and everything. But I also want to time warp to the Jupiter transfer point and we'll try it from there. Okay, hold on. I just noticed that uh, behind our Delta V stats we don't have sufficient avionics 0.18 tons over. So I'm just gonna take that out of this tank here, I think. Okay. I don't think it'll even change the burn time very much. Or did it? N nope, I don't think so. Okay. Alright, so now avionics is okay. Hopefully through all the stages. Let me just double check. And here? Ooh, that's bad. But hold on a sec. That stage will not have these fairings on, and with the fairings off, it's okay. All right, so yeah, everything's very tight. We will have to drop the fairings, but that is normal. Okay, I believe everything is okay now. So let's save that. And I need to time warp to the Joule transfer time, or Jupiter transfer time. Okay, here we go. SAS on, throttle up. And we are lined up with the moon, as I typically do. Seems like all systems are go. So, ignition. And launch. Okay, the tower is clear, handing over to Smart ASS. Hmm, I actually want a 90 degree roll, it looks like. Okay, we are past the speed of sound, everything looks nominal. Still a minute to go on the boosters. Thirty seconds to go on the boosters. Picking up speed, having to watch for decoupler overheating of course. Okay, separation. Separation is good. Let's go to 45 there then. Let me double check what our stages are like. Okay, yeah, it looks like we have plenty. Should be able to restart the J2 stage even. To start us on our way to Jupiter. Okay, we are now in space. Things are still looking good. Plenty of time to apoapsis. I am carrying the fairings for an extended period of time out of an overabundance of caution. 
So if you guys were wondering about the fairings, yep, I'm just going to carry them up until I'm absolutely sure it's safe to separate them. Okay, M1 is out. Stage separation. Ignition. Okay, J2s have ignited, and we continue on. Well, let's try the fairings. Okay, fairings look clear. We do have little separatrons to help us reignite these. And so we'll probably, well, we might not end up with much. No, we will. We will end up with oh, extra delta V to start us on our trip to Jupiter. Gonna lock the aerozine and N204 on the other stages so that I only use that stage for any RCS turns we might need to do. Okay, we are now past apoapsis, still burning away. We've got quite a ways to go yet, but it should be all right. Okay, I'm now correcting my vertical speed so that we can get a nice circular orbit, or at least close to it. So pitched up to 20 degrees. Okay, uh, 248 by 205. Not the best, but uh, I'll take that. That should be fine. All right, um, I probably should take my time plotting for Jupiter and making sure everything's all right. So I'll probably save that for the next episode. So we'll we'll see whether this can fulfill the intended Jupiter mission next time. But let me get the solar panels out, our glorious new solar panels. Yes, and here near Earth, they should be more than enough to keep the charge going. Yep. No problems. There. Well, okay, a little bit of problems, but they're not exactly angled in the best way. Hmm. Ah, uh, these guys haven't uh, extended. Let me extend those as well. But I'm not going to reorient it. Three days should be plenty of time for us to get our transfer to Jupiter lined up. And then we'll be dumping the core that is at the top of the J2 stage, which is consuming so much, so much electric charge. Alright, so that is the situation. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.